Hey guys, how are you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing another movie review, so hopefully you find this one interesting. This movie is a horror film from the United States, English language, released in the year 2019, directed by Ari Aster, and this film is called Midsummer. So Midsummer is about a group of American friends. This woman, she's had a horrifying incident in her family that has caused her to be inconsolable. She's devastated, and her boyfriend doesn't know what to do to, to basically support her. And so he comes up with an idea that a group of his friends had to go to Midsummer, which is an event in Sweden that's a cultural sort of event. And so one of these friends is actually Swedish and he has a community that celebrates Midsummer, and he thinks it's a perfect opportunity for the friends to actually do a thesis on this experience. And so the boyfriend says, all right, to the girlfriend, look, this is something that we really need to do. It will really uh, brighten up your day. And so she at first reluctantly accepts, but when they go to Sweden, she believes it's the right thing. And so as the events take place, there's rituals that take place. And unfortunately, after a while, things start to become a little bit sinister. And this is where the friends realize that they may be in fact in grave danger so whether or not that is the case is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Midsummer. This is definitely a movie that I had massive expectations for. I love Ari Aster, I loved Hereditary, but my biggest skepticism coming into Midsummer is that it was a follow-up film. Now, follow-up films, whether it's a director or a singer or whatever, it's very hard to maintain the level that gave you the recognition in the first place. And so a lot of the time, directors or singers or whatever, their standard drops is because they can't maintain that. And so M. Night Shyamalan was definitely one of those directors. I love M. Night Shyamalan, but ever since The Sixth Sense, I don't think it is he has raised himself to that level ever since then. And so coming into this movie, I was wondering whether or not Ari Aster was going to be another M. Night Shyamalan in not quite maintaining that level. And so that would bring a lot of disappointment. And that's what I was skeptical about is that, all right, well, will I enjoy this movie as much as I really want to? Because the expectations are very, very high. But I saw the trailer. I thought the trailer did exactly what it should do. It entices the viewer. It looked like a very beautiful film, but it looked like a very nasty film at the same time. And so I was wondering, um, wondering what am I actually getting myself into and after watching the film I will say that this is one of the rare occasions where a director has maintained that level of high quality without really copying what made him very good so hereditary it would have been easy to do all the tricks that he did in hereditary for midsummer and so a lot of people this is where the standard drops is that okay well this is a recycled experience this is an experience I've seen before but Ari Aster actually creates something very fresh in midsummer and the biggest idea that is very fresh is actually creating a sense of terror in a sense of safety. Now what I mean by that is that 99% of this film takes place in the daytime. Now daytime we associate with safety is because we know what's going on, we can see what's going on. But what makes the darkness such a, uh, a very important tool as far as horror is concerned is that we don't see what's in the shadows. And if you don't see what's in the shadows, your mind can start playing tricks on you. And mind is a very powerful thing, it can be a very, very scary thing as well. And so not knowing what's in the shadows, your mind plays tricks on you and you start to create a boogeyman. And so uh, nighttime brings fear. Whereas daytime, as I said, you can see what's going on. So it's very difficult to create a sense of fear. And I think Ari Aster demonstrates how good he is by creating something that's incredibly unnerving. Now, this is a very weird and surreal film. There are some moments that really have you scratching your head thinking, all right, well, that was incredibly uncomfortable. And the whole environment that Ari Aster creates is what makes the film so unsettling. And so it is in daytime, but it's use, uh, using the visual effects uh, to absolute perfection that makes the back of, uh, of your, uh, the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. And so whether it's the body language from everybody involved or whether it's the weird, as I said, the surreal qualities that Ari Aster uses in this movie, it just makes it a, a slow sense of anticipation. It's a very deliberate build-up. And that build-up goes from something that's very safe, once again, daylight, or whether it's these very, gentle people or they appear to be very gentle people but then as the movie starts to progress the the score starts to become a little bit darker the overall underbelly starts to become a little bit sinister and so it starts to contradict the beauty that you can see on camera and the beauty that you can see in the production and the cinematography starts to have that very unnerving effect and I, I thought to myself okay that strong sense of security that I had at the start of the movie is starting to dissolve and because it's dissolving 
you start to become a little bit disorientated and you start to lose that sense that, okay, I'm safe. And that's everything that you want from a horror film. And as I said, it's very difficult to do that in the daylight. And this is something that Ari Aster really nails. As I said, it's through the visuals, it's through the score, everything as far as production is concerned does its best to really unsettle you. There are some set pieces in this film that I thought were expertly handled as far as horror is concerned. As I said, that slow sense of anticipation leading up to an explosion, uh, basically the wick has been lit. You know that it's going to eventually get to the dynamite. You know it's going to have a high impact. You're bracing yourself for that impact. But when it happens, it will still shock you. And so the violence is very, very brutal. And I think that was very important is because it is that explosion. It is that dynamite. It is something that is nasty, that's promising a nasty surprise around every corner but because you're not quite sure when this is going to happen, it will take you by surprise, it will shock you, then all of a sudden you start to suspect, all right, well, when is the next surprise going to happen? And so that total sense of control that has been lost, I thought, makes the film as rewarding as it is. And so that was fantastic. You got the performance from Florence Pugh, the main character, that was absolutely phenomenal. Her emotions were very real. I could actually relate to her. I never felt as though she was acting. And I just thought, what she goes through, no one deserves that. And so because you can relate to a character and you can support a character it makes that fear factor go through the roof and so I thought that was phenomenal uh, there are some moments that, as I said, are very strange, but the strange quality creates that sense that, all right, I'm disorientated, I don't feel safe, and there is no security blanket to go to. And so, as I said, you associate daylight with security, but that security is taken because Ari Aster has control, and he is basically dictating how you should feel. And so I thought that was phenomenal. It's very unpredictable, and as I said, uh, yeah, the special effects were absolutely phenomenal. It's a beautiful film, but at the same time, quite an ugly movie. And on top of that, you've got it set in in Midsummer, which is a cultural event in Sweden, which creates a lot of interest but the movie is banking on, as I said, the ugliness that the movie has underneath and it's slowly simmering up to the top and it starts to uh, you know, engulf the beauty that the movie has. And so it's like a very surreal, uh, beautiful nightmare that I'm sure a lot of people are going to like. And so that was all very, very good. So you uh, also have the, the cult, not so much a cult, but the people who are actually celebrating Midsummer, I thought were very, very creepy. The performances aren't as good as uh, Florence Pugh's but they are absolutely fantastic in a way that actually creates that unnerving quality is that on the outside they look very peaceful and harmless but on the inside you start to suspect all right well it, there's something a little bit odd here and so once again it's that security that's been taken away from you if I have a problem with Midsummer, it's a very minuscule problem I thought it went for a little bit too long but having said that on the other side the very long duration that this movie has, it does give you that slow anticipation. And so it's that unnerving quality, it's that subtlety that is managed, uh, it has been managed to be created through the length of, of, length of the film. And so you, know, you have to be patient, you have to have that minor, you know, sort of that attention to the minor details. But at the same time, I thought that there was a, a few scenes here and there that could have been edited a little bit better to make the fluency a little bit more continuous. But that's a minuscule problem in what was a fantastic horror experience Ari Aster is a master. I can't wait to see what he achieves next. And so if you are a fan of Hereditary, I would definitely think I definitely think you should check out Midsummer. It is every bit as good as uh, the movie that made him uh, the name that he is. And so that is very rare. And for that, I'm going to give Midsummer four and a half stars. All right, guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching movies and I'll see you later.